From a brisk morning in Lawrenceville, we welcome you to Mercer County High School Baseball on the WBCB Sports Network. Alongside Ryan Baxter, I'm Jordan Hirsch, and today we've got CVC Valley Division action between the Ewing Blue Devils and the Lawrence Cardinals. Today's game on the WBCB Sports Network is brought to you by Capital Health Systems, the Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, Haldeman Ford Subaru, Kessel Dermatology, the Revere Restaurant, the New Jersey Education Association, Trenton Thunder, the Trentonian, and of course this is the Trentonian pregame show, the Italian People's Bakery, Jammer Doors, and Hyundai of Hyundai of Trenton and Mako Ewing. And Ryan, I'd like to welcome you inside here to the Trentonian pregame show because we've got a real interesting matchup on tap. And let's start out with Ewing. This is their opening day after having their previous two games rained out. This is a program, a program that rent, went through its fair share of struggles last season, but finished the year on a high note, winning the Mercer County Invitational. And they're hoping that the end of last season can carry over into this one. Oh, absolutely. If you're Ewing, you're just hoping to pick up exactly where you left off last year, you know? Not exactly the way that you wanted your regular season to go, but a lot of teams can say that, really. They just want to establish themselves that, hey, we can play in Mercer County, we can play in the CVC, and we can go up against any team here, and they're really going to look to establish themselves. I know they're itching to get out there after these couple rainouts here, and going up against a top team like Lawrence here, they want to make a statement that they're here. Yeah, and let's run down this Ewing lineup as the Cardinals have taken in the field. Leading off will be the second baseman, Joey Andreas. Batting second, center fielder, Lorenzo Patron. Batting third, catcher, Chris Salmon. Batting fourth, the pitcher and designated hitter, Colin Elam. Batting fifth, third baseman, Jake Mignona. Batting sixth and playing first base, Keith, Keith Lesko. And the bottom three are the left fielder, or center fielder, Ryan, Ryan Gregg. Right fielder, Sam Leibowitz. And shortstop, Sam Simpkins. And they will take on the sophomore right-hander, Deacon Moore, and he is on this Cardinals team, fresh off a trip to the Central Jersey Group 3 Finals last year, and they've picked up right from where they left off here this season, starting out 2-0. Ryan, this team is well-balanced, well-coached, and of course, after falling in last year's state finals, their goal this year is to get back and win it, and they've got as good of a chance as, as anyone. They have a lot of returning talent from that last year's team, and we talk about last year's team a lot. If they can keep up their momentum from last year, obviously they want to come back with a state championship this time, and they obviously have the talent to do so and like you said they're off on the right foot it's really just about keeping that foot on the gas and having that momentum exactly when they need it well andreas stinks digs in and we are underway from lawrence with a first pitch strike fastball on the outside corner oh and one the count to andreas deacon moore the younger brother of kellen moore the lafayette commit and he delivers a strike on the outside corner makes it oh and two trying to duplicate what his brother did on Monday in the opener, 16 strikeout performance against Trenton in the 5-2 win. The 0-2 from Moore is popped foul and out of play, back behind home plate. You could have made a play on that, Jordan. Would have had to have real long arms there, Ryan. <laughs> About an Odell Beckham that. <laughs> but yeah, he really just has to go out and we repeat the 16 strikeouts in a seven inning game. That is, un that's ridiculous numbers right there. The 0-2 once more foul to the backstop. Yeah, Kellen, 16, he only went six innings, 16 strikeouts. So 16 of his 18 outs were by the K. Picked up his 100th career strikeout in that game as well on Monday. That's a boring day for the fielders that day, but it's also fun to watch. It's like watching an artist paint. The 0-2 is just a bit outside with the breaking ball. Really, run. really good discipline to hold off on that. Yeah, we'll run the count to 1-2. That didn't miss by much. The 0-2 coming from the sophomore right-hander. Kicks and deals. Up high, two balls and two strikes. Andreas has worked the count back even. He's had a couple tough pitches to foul off here. He started out 0-2 to bring it back even. A lot of discipline shown. 2-2 pitch coming to Andreas, just high, three balls and two strikes. Great battle here to begin the ball game between Andreas and Moore. Let's see if Moore has that put away stuff just like his brother does. Payoff pitch coming from Moore. The 3-2, swing and a miss, struck him out. Deacon Moore fans Andreas to begin the ball game. Andreas with a really tough at bat there for Moore to start this game. And it's like we were saying, Ewing's going to come out and establish himself against the tough pitching staff here and having him throw, what, six, seven pitches at bat already getting out there. Yeah, and this is a Lawrence team that really does have a great staff all around. They've only given up three runs in their first two games. 
as the first pitch to the center fielder, Lorenzo Patron, is on the inside corner for strike one. Patron last season hit 360 in 50 at bats and takes a ball up high. He's somebody that Ewing wants to get going early. If he has those numbers from last season, you know he wants to get on base right now. And try to set it up for his catcher, Chris Salmon, who waits on deck. The 1-1 one -one is ripped back up the middle. That's a base hit past the diving shortstop, Kelly. And Lorenzo Patron has the first hit of the day for the Blue Devils. We talked about Lawrence picking it up right where they left off. Lorenzo Patron picking up where he left off, building on that already insane average. And it will bring up the catcher, Chris Salmon, now with a runner on first and one out. Chris Salmon, 339 hitter last season, 62 at bats, 18 runs batted in, and he takes just off the plate for ball one. That was close right there. Yeah, Deacon Moore so far has been pounding either in the strike zone or has been right near it, and he's been throwing the heat here early. Comes set at the letters, kicks and deals a 1-0. Popped up, short left. And that one is going to hang up there and be caught by the third baseman, Dan Drizga, for the second out of the inning. Those are really tough plays there, straight up like that. I always hated getting plays like that when I was over at first. It was, it was always tough because, I mean, it's supposed to be easy. It's a pop fly, but with how high it is, the ball blends into the clouds. It's a good play over there. Yeah, and especially with we got kind of mostly cloudy skies here, white ball and the white clouds. It's a tough play. Hats off to him. As the pitcher Colin Elam digs in with Patron on first and takes a breaking ball over the inside part of the plate for strike one. He's already established the heat. He's going to have to get this off speed going as well. Patron takes his lead off first and he's back easily. He dives back into first. Got a turf field here at Lawrence Ryan and players dive like that you got to believe the parents love this because it's a lot less laundry oh my goodness yeah my mother would be so happy if I played on turf the amount of mud I put that poor woman through a pie one ball and one strike now to Elam although that was kind of fun about baseball just getting dirty that was always an aspect of the game how dirty can you get yeah. the games over the 1-1 one -one pitch from Moore is hit in the air off the first base side and it's going to be back out of play into the parking lot. One ball and two strikes now to count. Patron running on the breaking ball there. It seems like he was going to be able to slide in there. Really good time to run, too. That's something that I think Ewing's going to want to get going as well. They want to they want to see if the Lawrence defense can help their pitchers just as much as their pitchers help themselves here. Moore's already established that he can get into the strike zone and get people out with his stuff. But we got to see if the field can do it now, too. So a ball and two strikes to the pitcher and designated hit hitter Colin Elam. Takes up and away for ball two. The count's back even. Moore looking to work around the one-out single from Patron. His 2-2 two -two is fouled to the backstop. These have been some tough battles here from the Ewing batters. Like, they have all... They either fall behind and get it back even, or they just keep fouling off these strikeout pitches that Moore's trying to put by him. Count even at two and two. Patron takes the lead off first. There he goes, pitches outside, and he's gonna steal that base without a throw. That was a really good pitch again from Moore there. I, that one seemed like it nicked the top of the zone there, but umpire disagrees with me. And so now full count runner in scoring position and a prime opportunity for Ewing to get on the board first. Can the pitcher Colin Elam help his own cause here in the top of the first? Moore set at the belt. His payoff pitch is just fouled off. Tough reach there. I was surprised that, that was, that's a great pitch there from Moore than to get him leaning out like that on something so outside. Elam last season, a 357 hitter, 10 walks. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Patron off of second. And that's up and away, ball four. Now they've got Patron picked off back at second. They throw behind him, and it goes into center field. And he'll hold up there, backed up nicely by Aiden Poot, the center fielder. But now second and first with two outs. There's a little hesitation there 
looked like he was gonna take off for third, but then thought better of it, and obviously a really good decision there. He would have been hosed. And it brings up the third baseman, Jake Mignona. Mignona last season hit 465 at bats, and he's got a chance to drive in the first run of the ball game. First pitch from Moore is high, 1-0. Mignona, one of the leaders of this Ewing squad. He's definitely somebody that wants to get the first couple RBIs of the season. He's in a 1-0 count. Moore checks the runners and delivers on the inside corner. Fastball, 1-1. One one. Looks like Moore is almost trying to establish another set of, like, establish a strike zone here because it seems like he's wanted a couple of the ones that have been left off and called balls. 1-1 one, one is grounded out towards third. Drizga up with it, fires to Kellen Moore in time. And Deacon Moore works out of the second and first jam. No runs, a hit, two men left. No score as we head to the bottom of the first. And with that, I'd like to remind you that Th uh, Trenton Thunder Baseball returns for the 2024 season on Tuesday, June 4th. Catch all the fun and excitement of a Thunder game throughout the summer. For ticket information, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com. Or call 609-394-3300. That's 609-394-3300. Post-game firework nights, Tuesday dollar dog nights, and pork roll Fridays throughout the season. Trenton Thunder Baseball, Big League Futures, Major League Fun, and the Italian People's Bakery is proud to support high school sports on the WBCB Sports Network. Visit them at their signature location at 63 Butler Street for the finest rolls, deli meats, and pastries. Drive by to smell that homemade bread made daily or have them cater your next party or affair. The Italian People's Bakery for the best hoagies on Sunday afternoon, the finest dessert trays for your special get-together. Visit them once again, 63 Butler Street in Chambersburg. The Italian People's Bakery since 1936. And finally, don't forget if you miss any of today's action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of The Trentonian. For your complete local and national news seven days a week, it's The Trentonian or online at trentonian.com, the only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week. It's The Trentonian. No score as we head to the bottom of the first and the Cardinals will be set to dig in for the first time. Let's run down their lineup. They start with the shortstop, Robert Kelly. Then the pitcher, Deacon Moore, bats second. Right fielder, Teak Toto, hits third. First baseman, Kellen Moore, bats fourth. Hitting fifth, bat playing second base, Riley Rivera. Aiden Poot, the center fielder, bats sixth. DHing is Connor Williver. He bats seventh. Josh Vignoski, playing left field, bats eighth. And the third baseman, Dran... D Dran Dan Drizga, easy for me to say, <laughs> rounds out the lineup, batting ninth, and they will take on Colin Elam, the right-hander who has begun his warm-up tosses. This Cardinals team, they've got a very potent offense. Haven't seen it too much throughout the first two games. They, of course, got shut down by Luke Billings on Thursday. Were able to come back and win that game in 12, 2-1 on an, on an Aiden Poot walk-off single. A wild pitch in the seventh ended up tying that game. But we know this Cardinals offense, they could score a lot of runs. And, again, they're just well-balanced, well-coached. And if they're going to want to get back to where they were last year, this offense is going to have to be at the forefront, Ryan. It really, it, I guess that would be like the only question mark to start the season for them. I mean, obviously they've won their first two games, but when you talk about a team like Lawrence and the way they played last year, seven runs in two games is not something that you expect to hear. And you know that they want to make sure that they know that they're just one of the best teams in general, not just one of the best pitching teams or one of the best defensive teams. They want to be the best team, period. So they have to come out here and establish that they can still hit. Righty on righty, Robert Kelly takes a strike on the outside corner to get the Cardinals offensive game started. It's 0-1. Elam working quickly. His 0-1 is chopped out towards third base. Mignona up with it, fires across the diamond in time, one away. Quick two pitches there. It's not the best start for the Cardinals. But it's good to see that they're aggressive. They're liking what they're seeing so far. They just got to swing through it instead of getting on top or underneath it like we saw just then. And that brings the pitcher, Deacon Moore, to the plate. That was a nice play there by Big Nona, reigning, ranging to his left. Quick little hop, too. They usually eat some guys up. So two pitches, one away, and Deacon Moore takes a healthy cut at the first one and fans through it. It's 0-1. He's trying to untie this game right now, get himself established with some runs. Elam's 0-1 is a breaking ball off the plate. 
Counts back even one and one. Just a bit low and two balls and one strike. Your count now to Deacon Moore. Elon's switching with a pitch clock out there right now. That one's ripped towards the Ewing dugout. Look out. It's two balls and two strikes. One of those Olays. Yeah. Moore off to a bit of a slow start this season. One for nine with a run scored. The lefty digs back in. The 2-2 from Elam is lined and past oh. the shortstop into left field. And a one-out single for Deacon Moore. So the Cardinals start out the bottom of the first just as Ewing started out the top of the first with one out and then a single. That's an unfortunate play for Simpkins there. That's something that you definitely want to make as a shortstop, but that ball's hit really, really hard in the tail on that. It would have been a great play regardless, but yeah, wait for Moore to get off the schneid and hopefully get his hitting season going. And it brings Teak Toto to the plate. First pitch to him is down and in, ball one. Top five name in Russia County, I'll stand on it. Teak Toto, double T. Yeah, absolutely. Moore was only a couple steps off of first, so he's got an easy job getting back there. Got to keep him on his toes. Even if you're a couple steps off, you can get picked off if you're not paying attention. That one is taken for a strike on the outside part of the plate. One ball and one strike to count. Toto one for five to begin the year. And he's ahead in the count now, two and one. It's a cold, blustery morning, one of the kind of days where you just got to hold your paper, papers down, Ryan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't think the waters are going to be doing much good. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, I've got my water bottles holding down the lineup cards right now. They've done a sufficient job so far. God forbid you get thirsty, Jordan. This one's chopped foul. It'll remain two and two. Yeah, I said before the game I brought these water bottles not to drink, but to kind of <laughs> act as things just to hold down all the papers. It's nice to have paperweights that are supposed to be for hydration. Should invest maybe in some bricks for my next game. It's not the worst idea. That way I can heard. drink <laughs> water. I'm sure a couple of the guys won't, let, won't mind borrowing a couple baseballs. Moore's back at first. Actually, not a bad idea. That, honestly, that might not even work because the wind's going to take the balls away too. Two ball, two strike is cut on and missed. It's a quick pitch there from Elam there to get him it wasn't necessarily a quick pitch, but it was definitely quicker than most of his other motions to start this game out. Way to get him out. And that brings Kellen Moore to the plate, the Lafayette transfer, one of the better pitchers here in the CVC, and batting cleanup playing first base today. He's got his younger brother out at first. And he goes, pitches swung on and missed. The throw down to second is in time. What a throw by Salmon to gun down Moore and end the inning. No runs a hit, nobody left. We're through one in Lawrence. No score will head to the second on the WBCB Sports Network. Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play or being on the debate team is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Spring is here, and it's time to view the world through Jammer Doors, a family-owned and operated local business since Babe Ruth started playing for the Yankees all the way back in 1920. Today, Jammer Doors continues to swat home run sales, service, and installation of garage doors and openers, entry doors, patio doors, and storm doors. Jammer Doors features rain or garage doors, steel or aluminum, and crafted for dependable, long-lasting service. Jammer Doors does their own work and installation using no subcontractors, saving you money. Avoid the big box stores and save with Jammer Doors. Visit, visit their showroom at 2850 Brunswick Pike, Business Route 1 in Lawrenceville, or in the Yardley Grist Mill at 10 at North Main Street and coming soon, their magnificent new showroom on Route 1 opposite the Lawrence Shopping Center. 
As we welcome you back here to Mercer County High School Baseball on the WBCB Sports Network. No score between the Blue Devils and the Cardinals as we head to the second. Bottom of the first finished up with Deacon Moore getting thrown out, trying to steal second base by Chris Salmon. And Ryan, you were talking before the break, you had a good little line that yeah. you wanted to share. Yeah, uh, usually when uh, people catch Salmon, but Salmon caught somebody there throwing him out there. I thought that was pretty funny. Pristine. <laughs> the things you come up with in the cold on WBCB Sports Network. Mm -hmm. I think, and you know what's funny? Fish would have been proud. He would have been. <laughs> that gets a laugh out of our video engineer, Colin Summers. Shout out Rich Fisher. So it'll be the six, seven, and eight batters due up here for Ewing. That's Keith Lesko, Ryan Gregg, and Sam Leibowitz. Public, Pu public figure. Oh yeah. Deacon. Uh, yeah, the, the, a noted public figure, Rich Fisher. Deacon Moore back out for his second inning of work. Struck out one, allowed a hit in his first inning of work. This one's grounded out to second base. Riley Rivera up with it, and one pitch, one away, as Keith Lesko grounds out to second. Well, that's ideal if you're Moore. One pitch, one out, get a quick game established and going. Yeah, especially after he threw some pitches there in the first. Ended up walking a guy and ran a lot of deep counts. That's good for his pitch count to be able to get the first batter out on just one pitch. So here's Ryan Gregg, the seven-hole hitter, and he takes on the outside corner for strike one. Moore's been trying to paint that outside corner, trying to get calls whenever he can. Now Deacon Moore working quickly, and he delivers another one painted on the black, 0-2. Oh quickly, no balls and two strikes. The 0-2 oh from Moore. Down and away, tried to hit that outside corner again. That one was a little too far off the plate. Trying to give him the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sticking to that outside corner, he's gonna get in the calls. A ball and two strikes to Greg. Swing and a miss, second strikeout for Deacon Moore. Stuck to that outside part of the plate there. Gave him the heat on the corner. Couldn't catch up to it. Beautiful pitching from Moore. And it brings up the right fielder now, Sam Leibowitz. Leibowitz hit 224 last season, 13 for 58, 10 runs scored, five batted in. And the first pitch he sees in 2024 is a ball up high. <laughs> Quickly 2-0 now I'll, I'll say to it's, Leibowitz. It's very interesting hearing the coaches call out these like plays or pitches from the dugout here almost like they're establishing defenses on the football field as he throws a strike there but uh it, it's as if they're trying to establish like a nickel defense or something if you're out on the football field i'm not used to hearing the coaches yell out numbers so that the positions can get ready yeah and that's the beauty of being down here is this one's hit in the air towards right field coming in into foul territory and making the grab is Toto to end the inning. One, two, three, go the Blue Devils in the top of the second. Still no score as we head to the bottom of the second here on the WBCB Sports Network. And allows me to tell you that car buying is made simple at Hyundai of Trenton, 1655 North Olden Avenue in Ewing Township. Over 100 new Hyundai models from Elantras and Sonatas to SUVs like the Hyundai Santa Fe, Tucson, and Palisade, including hybrid models. Hyundai of Trenton has the inventory, including a huge selection of pre-owned certified vehicles, no market adjustments on any car in stock, get an extra $1,000 rebate trade in value towards any new vehicle. Hyundai of Trenton will buy your vehicle even if you don't purchase a car. Fast payment, top dollar paid for your car. Hyundai of Trenton, car buying made simple, and the area's fastest growing dealership at 1655 North Olden Avenue in Ewing Township. And Trenton Thunder Baseball returns for the 2024 season on Tuesday, June 4th, warmer times. Catch all the fun and excitement of a Thunder game throughout the summer. For ticket information, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com. Or call 609-394-3300. That's 609-394-3300. Post-game firework nights, Tuesday dollar dog nights, and pork roll Fridays throughout the season. Trenton Thunder Baseball, Big League Futures, Major League Fun. So after the Blue Devils went down one, two, three in the top of the second, we head to the bottom of the second. Kellen Moore, Riley Rivera, and Aiden Poot, four, five, and six, do up here for Lawrence. Moore was, of course, up at bat when his younger brother got thrown out to end the bottom of the first. And he'll get another chance here to begin the inning. 
starts his at bat from the last inning pretty much over here, so you can wipe that away. Whatever his count was, if he missed a couple, looked at a couple, he didn't want to. This is technically a second look at Elam already, so. You kind of got a free look at some of his pitches there in the bottom of the first, as the first one here is taken for a strike on the outside black. Looping breaking ball there. I'm surprised he didn't take a hack at that. Maybe Elam trying to pitch a little backwards here to the powerful Kellen Moore, who takes in the dirt for ball one. Yeah, maybe you're right, because that was two straight off-speed pitches right there. When he got the call, one was low. He definitely doesn't want him to elevate this ball. Kellen Moore off to a two for eight start this season, as that one's fouled back near us. One ball and two strikes. Well, that was spooky. Because the camera's not on me, I'm gonna pretend like I did not flinch at that. I didn't see it either, Jordan, you're good. If you didn't see it, it didn't happen. Yeah, it's like if a tree falls in the wood, it's silent. Well, see, I don't believe that. I do. That one's grounded out towards shortstop. Up with it is Simpkins across the diamond to retire Kellen Moore, one gone here in the second. Keeping it low is Elam there. Got right on top of the ball, right over to the shortstop. Easy little, easy little ground ball. It was like I.O. practice. And it brings up the second baseman now, Riley Rivera. Rivera, one for seven to begin the year. We'll have to get into that if the tree falls in the forest a little later on because <laughs> I, 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 I do feel that that is a, a good debate that we should have. Yeah, it, it is a good one. I think it's a good one to have during a baseball game for sure. Yeah, one ball. No strikes. So I believe that it makes a sound, just no one heard it. But As that one's hit in the air down the right field line and foul out of play. Now, obviously, that's the argument that anybody can make there, but it really just goes down to the fact that nobody's heard it, so we don't know if it even makes a noise. And now, usually you would hear, like, if a tree falls, if something, if there's a car crash out there, we'll hear the car crash, right? When have you ever heard somebody say, you heard that? I think that was a tree see, falling. See, now we're comparing trees and car crashes, though. Well, they're very similar. Like apples to oranges, I mean, Ryan. they're very similar sounds. <laughs> they're big booms. Two balls and one strike. The count to Rivera. Takes low three and one. You know, uh, Colin just pointed that out. I was looking over at the scoreboard there. They have a very interesting way of calling balls and strikes there. They're at the very top there. And if you look, it looks like it just says the number 31 as he laces one through the third and short gap. Yeah, Riley Rivera all over that fastball from Elam through the five six hole. And he's got a one out single here in the second. But yeah, I thought I was, I thought I was like, it tri I thought it was like tripping for a second because it looked like it was like the time or something it, like because it's like 101 and it said like oh it's not one o'clock in the afternoon yet and then it just kept going up I was like oh those are strikes and balls yeah multi-purpose field here they're using the soccer scoreboard time as the ball strike counter as Rivera is easily back at first and the batter now Aiden Poot who had the big hit on Thursday night against Robbinsville the walk-off single to right with the bases loaded in the 12th and he's Ahead now, one ball, no strikes here in his first at bat this morning. Aiden Poot also went five innings in that game, struck out eight. Rivera easily back at first again. Elam's working quick, regardless of whether he's working towards the batter or the base runner here. He's just quick, quick, quick. Hey, he knows it's cold. As that one's over the outside part of the plate for strike one. Trying to get back in the dugout back where it's a little warmer. Yeah, he's all decked up. He's got the sleeves. He's got the face mask. As much as he loves baseball, he doesn't love this weather, I assume. 1-0 back to Elam. He's got it. Fires to second for one. On to first. It's low and dug out. What a dig. Yeah, what a play there. Turned by the Ewing infield to get out of the second. And no Elam runs to hit. No one out. left. We will head to the third. Still no score here from Lawrence on the WBCB Sports Network. Hi, Merrill Reese reminding you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365. That's 609 
882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Welcome back to Lawrence High School, and don't forget, if you miss any of today's action, you can read all about it in tomorrow's edition of The Trentonian. For your complete local and national news, seven days a week, it's The Trentonian, or online at trentonian.com. The only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County, seven days a week, it's The Trentonian. Back here from the turf field at Lawrence High School, still no score between the Blue Devils and the Cardinals. Nine, one, and two due up for Ewing, that's Sam Simpkins, Joey Andreas, and Lorenzo Patron. Deacon Moore back out for his third inning of work. He's got two strikeouts so far. He's allowed one hit. Sam Simpkins in for his first at bat of the 2024 season. He's not trying to leave anything to chance as he takes a big cut and miss at the first one. Not at all. That's a lot of the Blue Devils today taking cuts at either pitch one or pitch two. A one from Moore on the outside corner yet again. Both these pitchers have really established the outside part of the plate so far. Oh, 100%, especially Moore here. He was pounding that last inning, too. He got that 1K on the outside. Quickly, no balls and two strikes. Way outside. Good to leave, he, good to leave that one alone there. He's definitely establishing the eyes on the outside here. He stays there. I do think the inside part of the plate might be open if he goes there. The 1-2 to Simpkins is popped up foul. Hope. No one's cars are parked back there. Fouled it into little alcove away from the parking lot. I, I parked far away here. <laughs> so hopefully we're safe as that one is on the outside Beautiful. corner. A called strike three. Three strikeouts through the first nine batters that Deacon Moore has faced. And there's one gone in the third. What a breaking ball there from Deacon Moore. Froze him there. It looked like he was sitting in the heat there, but he just broke off a beautiful bender. First backwards K of the morning for Deacon Moore, and it brings Joey Andreas to the plate. He was a strikeout victim to lead off the ball game. This time he swings at the first pitch, pops it up to the right side. Rivera is there to make the catch, ranging into the outfield turf. Quickly two down here in the top of the third. Andreas didn't give me a chance to talk about him. I was going to say he's looking to establish on an amazing at-bat in that first inning there. A 6-7 pitch at-bat at the fall and down 0-2. I like the aggression coming out here, swinging first pitch. Just hope for a better result next time. Yeah, I guess he figured he saw everything that Deacon Moore can throw at him and had a good idea of what was going to come. Just got a little bit under that one. As the first pitch to Patron is taken on the inside corner for strike one. Patron singled back in the first. Stuck outside with the righty, starting inside with the lefties here. We'll see if that's a, a theme almost. That breaking ball backed up a little bit, ran outside. It's a ball and a strike. One one is cut on and missed. One and two. I think more starting to feel it a little bit. Yeah, he's starting to get. More swings and misses than he was back in the first as he started to settle down a bit. That one's low. Two balls and two strikes, but the command has been much better since the first when he gave up a walk, allowed a couple batters to come back from down in the count and work their way ahead. He's just pounding it right now. Anytime he's missed, it's been a good miss, honestly. That one's just a bit high and maybe a little bit of an announcer jinx. The count's full. <laughs> Well, that was a good pitch. Though those last two pitches we saw were great pitches. The fact that uh, he was able to lay those two off were fantastic on his part. On a 3-2, Patron takes down an in ball four, and he works a walk. We apologize to Deacon Moore for the jinx. Yeah, well, the hats off to Patron as well. He saw a tough breaking ball low that he had to lay off, and then right after that tough breaking ball, he saw a fastball right at the numbers there that a lot of guys would have swung at, yet he didn't. So an even better at bat there for Patron. Brings the catcher, Chris Salmon, to the plate. He popped out to the shortstop back in the first. See if he can get a frozen rope into the gaps here. That one's right down the chute for strike one. That was a pretty good pitch to do just that on, but he takes a look at it, and now it's behind 0-1. A lot of the times you establish see a strike first, but sometimes that strike's the best pitch you're going to see in the at-bat. Patron back at first easily. <laughs> Moore checks the runner, and swing and a miss. Two strikes. Healthy hack from Salmon. 
He's behind now, 0-2. Oh, almost looked like he was out in front of the fastball. He was ready for it, but just too ready, almost. Yeah, got it started just a bit too early. Deacon Moore looking to work around the two-out walk and get out of this inning. And he'll have to wait at least one more pitch as Salmon gets just a piece of that ball to foul it off. Do you think there's any relation to legendary Angels outfielder Tim Salmon? I, I, I will say we have to do maybe a little bit more research on that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say no, but you never know. I've got my computer out here. Maybe in between innings, take a look. You might have to. No balls and two strike. The count on Chris Salmon. And Moore will step off. We had a bit of a delay in play here because nobody got the foul ball, and now Moore's taking his time here to, to establish to get his final strikeout pitch. And he delivers one down and away for ball two. Trying to get Salmon fishing out there, but he's really not biting for anything. Should say ball one. One ball, two strikes, two outs is what the scoreboard reads. Or and back is Patron. Or if you're me, 122 in the afternoon. Because that's what I initially thought it was telling me. Yeah. But it's not even close to one in the afternoon. It's a little too early for that. It'd be warmer if it was one in the afternoon. Yeah. One ball, two strike pitch is chopped in front of the catcher. Up with it is Dobkin. He throws to first in time. Great play there by the Cardinals backstop. No runs, no hits. One man left. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Still looking for our first run when we come back on the WVCB Sports Network. Hi, I'm Merrill Reeves. Kessel Dermatology offers great cosmetic dermatology featuring the latest technology in cosmetics, including Morpheus 8 for skin tightening and scars, ultraviolet A and B light treatment for psoriasis, eczema, and itching. Kessel Dermatology now offers Genesis and XLV laser treatments for wrinkles, facial discolorations, scars, and hair removal. Kessel Dermatology provides Botox and fillers. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Ball returns for the 2024 season on Tuesday, June 4th. Catch all the fun and excitement of a Thunder game throughout the summer. For ticket information, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com or call 609-394-3300. That's 609-394-3300. Post-game firework nights, Tuesday dollar dog nights, unlike the Phillies. And pork roll Fridays throughout the season. Trenton Thunder baseball, big league futures, major league fun. Brian, are you a Phillies fan? I'm a Red Sox fan. Oh, you're a Red Sox fan. I do like the Phillies, though. Okay. This is my first time back on a call with you since the Phillies announced they're not going with Dollar Dog Night. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, I am in Citizens Bank Park pretty often. I'm like a 40-minute drive, so I would say that the Phillies, if we do NLAL, they are my National League team. Um, I do love the food at Citizens Bank Park. It's a great ballpark, but the fact that they're not doing Dollar Dogs anymore kind of drops them out of the top five parks, if you ask me. Ooh. Like, I love Citizens Bank Park. I love all the things that they have down there, but there is no stadium in the world where there is cheap food. So the fact that they got rid of something that was giving me cheap food, letting me put weight on where I really need to put weight on, I, I just I can't do that. I can't accept that. And it's like, oh, and before anybody, if you're going to take a trip to Boston, just so you know, if you pay $10, for chicken tenders and fries, you get two tenders and a whole bunch of fries. Wow. Yeah, not so, sponsored, by the way. No, not no, not at all. I think I just kind of ruined a sponsorship with Fenway, if anything. Well, if you do want Dollar Dog Nights Tuesdays in the summer at Arm and Hammer Park. That's where we should go anyway. Trent Thunder has always been a staple in New Jersey. I always love going. First pitch to Viknovsky is taken for strike one. Go see our buddy here at WBCB, Mike Warren. Call those games. The amazing Mike Warren doing his absolute best like he always does. A one from Elam is roped out towards center. That ball is going to get down, split the gap, and roll for a while. Viknovsky off to the races, chasing it down is Petroni. And Viknovsky's going to pull in a second with a leadoff double. First extra base hit for either side this morning. But the way that this wind was blowing, it was going to be tough to get a ball into the outfield, but he does just that, splits the gap, and sets himself up to be driven in here. Lawrence looking good to start this inning. 
little lightning from the bottom of the lineup as it brings up the nine hole hitter, hitter Dran, Dan Drizga. Second time I've had trouble pronouncing his name. I think practice that a little bit more. It's a lot of D's, man. Yeah. I wonder if he appreciates the nickname Double D if you watched that Ed and Eddie as a kid. I don't, I don't know if I would stick with that. <laughs> I don't know. I think Ed and Eddie might be a little, uh, might be a little old for the kids these days. And I think Dan Drizga is happy about that. Yeah, honestly. As he digs in for the first time here this morning with a runner on second, nobody out. Seven Chris Samuel relaying the signs. And it's we've got a courtesy runner for Viknovsky. That's number two, Toby Mitchell, now out there at second. Drizga squares. Lesko comes all the way in, even with the bag at first base, and he takes a strike. Not trying to be secretive here is Drizga. No, not at all. I kind of like that, though. You bring the corner in here for third and first base here. It makes it tough to make a play on third because the shortstop has to barrel over to third base if they have to make a play there. The wind whips, the ball is bunted foul, 0-2, oh and, and now we'll see if the bunt is still on. We'll see what head coach Jim Mayer decides to do here with his nine-hole hitter. If it's me, I would stick with it just due to, like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Obviously, if it goes foul, you're out, but it seems like they're not going to stick with it. Drisco will swing, and he lines that one on the ground towards second off the glove of Andreas. Holding at third is Mitchell, Drizga to first. And there are runners on the corners now with nobody out in the top of the lineup coming back up for Lawrence. Looks like he didn't even need the bunt at all to move the runner over. <laughs> now instead of having a runner on third with one out, you have corners juiced with zero outs. This is a really, really good spot here for the Lawrence Cardinals. As they get the top of the lineup back coming up here, this is a beautiful situation for Lawrence. And one of their better hitters, Robert Kelly, this one's now bunted towards first. Coming home is Mitchell. The throw is in time to get him. Colin Elam with a strike to his catcher. Check that. That was actually Drizga. Viknovsky now on second. Drizga on first. And now Robert Kelly will be the batter. All right, there we go. Now we're back to the top of the owners. Still got runner in scoring position here. Good play from Elan there to get the runner at home, but nevertheless, Lawrence is still looking for that first run. First pitch to Kelly's taken for strike one. <laughs> Kelly wants to do everything in his power to get this runner home from second here. Do everything a leadoff man is supposed to do. And so now Viknovs gets second, Drizga at first. As this one's hit in the air, short right. In fact, the second baseman, Andreas, will settle under it, make the catch as he falls to the ground. Way to stick with it there by the Ewing second baseman. And there's two gone in the third. Kind of goes back to the uh, what I was saying earlier about those tough plays up popped up like that. It's more about the balance as well as anything. And are we getting flurries? I was wondering what that was. Is this hail? Well, all the weather we've had this week, it wouldn't surprise me. Earthquakes, thunderstorms. You know what, I meant to ask you about that as well as we get a swing and miss here for strike one. How are you after that earthquake? Everybody was freaking out about the earthquake and everything. I was like, I was fine. but I was kind of just taken off guard, I would say, as Deacon Moore, a chance to help his own cause, pops this one up off of third, slicing, and it's going to be just out of play into the bullpen. No balls and two strikes. Yeah, I was sitting at Ryder University, and all of a sudden, one of my friends that I was sitting with goes, is the ground shaking? And that's when it kind of clicked with me that, oh, this is an earthquake. <laughs> I remember we had an earthquake a little while ago when I was younger, probably like 13 or 12 yeah. or something around there, and it was something down in Virginia. It was like a five point something. This was like a 4.8, I think, but. No Real balls freaky. and two strikes here to Deacon Moore. Taken low, trying to shake up the scoreboard is Moore. It's a great breaking ball there from Elam as well. Sam loved the placement on that. Runners on second and first. One ball, two strikes, two outs, bottom three. And Moore hits one foul off of first. 
off of third, rather. I had my eyes on the parking lot over there on the left side because that looked like the ball was tailing right over there. Is that where you're parked? I'm over there still, thank you. Okay. But I watch out for everybody's cars because I feel bad. It's a good, good person there, Ryan. <laughs> thank you. One ball, two strikes to Moore. Chance to drive in the first run of the game. And Elon will step off, fake a throw back to second. Back easily is Viknovsky. See, I'm not a fan of that. I understand wanting to keep him there, but you already have two strikes and two outs. Get the guy at the plate out. On a one, two, Deacon Moore hits one in the air towards shallow left. Coming in on it is Ryan Gregg, settles under it, makes the grab. Colin Elam gets out of a jam in the bottom of the third. Still no score through the opening three here from Lawrence. We'll go to the fourth. Ewing looking to break that tie when we come back. Hi, I'm Merrill Riggs. Kessel Dermatology has a highly rated and award-winning dermatology team with over 130 years of collective clinical experience. They've been voted as the region's best dermatologist and doctor for 20 consecutive years. Over 1,500 five-star reviews from satisfied patients. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. And we're back here on the WBCB Sports Network alongside Ryan Baxter. I'm Jordan Hirsch as we are set for the top of the fourth. Still no score between the Blue Devils and the Cardinals. Ryan, we've got a pitcher's duel going on here at Lawrence. Yeah, we do. Colin Elam has come out and absolutely shoved against a really good lineup in Lawrence. And, uh... Well, Moore has come out and done the exact same thing against the Ewing team that's trying to establish themselves in Mercer County. And they've done just that. They've had tough at-bats. They've been aggressive just as much as that. They've been just as patient. Um, it's really just, it comes down, I think it's going to come down to defensive mistakes, honestly, because obviously there's walks. I think it's going to come down to see what team, if there's a team that makes an error or if there's just rough play getting a ball back into the infield. You know, it's going to come down to one of those weird little plays because it seems like one of those games that's going to have like a freak accident. Yeah, and both teams so far have played solid defensively, no errors through the first three innings. It'll be four, five, and six here for the Blue Devils in the fourth. That's the pitcher Colin Elam, third baseman Jake Mignona, and the first baseman Keith Lesko. Deacon Moore back out for his fourth inning of work, and the first pitch to Elam is high, 1-0. This feels like one of those games where it's really just going to come down to, you know, the little things. We saw in the inning before there was a foul ball there. Uh, there was a squeeze play uh, to try to get the runner home from third for the Lawrence team and the coach is very upset that he did not score on that and that's one of those little things that they work on constantly that just has to happen and I feel like that's going to come down. That's how this game is going to come down to. It's always about the little things. That one's roped out towards left but right at the left fielder Viknoski and he makes the grab for the first out. Hit it on the nose. You know those uh, hitting coaches say they are producers not directors right you can only produce the hard contact sometimes you're not in control of where it goes that one just unfortunate for elam right into the glove of ignofsky out there on left little and adam ball right there unfortunately and i'll bring up jake mignota he takes a first pitch strike it's zero and one caught the low end of the zone more did just then Mignona grounded out to third base back in the first. And this one's rocketed out towards deep right field. It's going to get down and go towards the wall. Off to the races is Mignona. He's already to second throw coming back in. He'll slide in safely with a one-out double. Back-to-back -back half innings here with extra base hits. One for Lawrence and now one for Ewing here. Seems like the bats are starting to wake up too. Just the second hit of the day for this Blue Devils squad, and it brings Keith Lesko, the first baseman, to the plate with a runner in scoring position. As McNona will trot back out to second. 
we need to stop talking about good things that go on in this game because we were just talking about a good pitcher's duel and we've had back-to-back -back innings of extra base hits and hit it, and they're starting to touch up both pitchers a little bit. Well, Ryan, you know we are in complete control of what goes on out here as announcers. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anyway. Swing and a miss. That one a little bit out in front was Lesko looking for the heat. Yes. Got a breaking pitch. Yeah, see, I called that pitch. <laughs> that was a great pitch from Moore there. No balls, one strike. Mignona with a wide lead off second. They throw behind him, and he's back. That, that was a really, really big lead there. You don't really see fat leads like that coming from second to third. Lesko takes a strike on the outside corner quickly, 0-2. Lesko disagreed with that one. He thought that one was a little bit too off the plate. Yeah, that's the thing, Deacon Morey's been pounding that outside part of the plate. You're able to see how far you can go out there, how far the umpire will give as the 0-2 pitches in the dirt and a nice block behind home plate by the catcher, Dobkin. One of those situations Moore hasn't found himself in too often in this game, so we're going to have to see how he gets out of it right here. He's got a runner in scoring position for just the second time. One, two, outside. Just a bit outside. And the count is even now at two and two. I think that was a better pitch than the one that got called for a strike, personally. Trying to shoot that outside black is Deacon Moore. Runner on second, one out, no score, top of the fourth. Moore checks the runner, kicks and deals. And it's roped out towards right. Coming in, now going back on it. And making the grab is Teak Toto. Mignona will tag and go to third. And now with two outs, the go-ahead run is 90 feet away here in the fourth. And it will bring up the left fielder, Ryan Gregg. Really productive at bat. Now you got the runner 90 feet away from scoring. Another, another play in right field there, keeping Toto on his toes out there, weirdly enough. Uh, he had I like that. that. He had that one go right over his head the last time he was able to make a play on this one for Lawrence's sake. And now Ewing has to capitalize on this great opportunity. Greg with a chance to put his team in front. That one's hit foul. That one I definitely did not flinch on. <laughs> You've got video, you, we've got video evidence, maybe? I, I, I mean, my eye evidence. I saw you that time. We'll take it. No balls in one strike to count to Greg. That one was a little further away from us, yeah, I will say. But yeah, that one was more scarier for the Ewing faithful over there. Apparently they're looking for the ball. They have no idea where it went. No balls and one strike. As the Blue Devils try to track down that last foul ball, Moore Ooh. delivers a nasty breaking pitch, and it's 0-2. He liked that one. He was talking a little bit after that one. Deacon Moore, a strike away from four shutout innings. Mignona takes his lead off third. The 0-2 to Greg popped up foul over our heads and back into the grass behind us. That's a home run in an elevator shaft. I've never heard that reference. That's like, I, you're full of good references here today, Ryan. Thank you. It's my first game of the year. I got I to gotta get myself going. No balls and two strikes the pitch. In the dirt, another nice block by Dobkin to keep that runner at third. Moore's really trying to get them fishing down low. He wants to establish that I have good breaking stuff, and we've seen it a couple times already here. I've oohed and odd at a couple of these curveballs and sliders that he's throwing. He started to mix it in here more as this game has gone on as well. The one-two to Greg is on the inside corner and a called strike three. Deacon Moore fired up as he skips back towards his dugout. That was absolutely filthy right there. Caught right there on the inside corner. Couldn't have executed it any better. Hats off, Deacon Moore. And it will send us to the bottom of the fourth. Still no score here from Lawrence on the WBCB Sports Network. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. 
Spring is here, although it doesn't feel like it with the weather. And it's time to view the world through Jammer Doors, a family-owned and operated local business since Babe Ruth started playing for the Yankees back in 1920. Today, Jammer Doors con continues to swat home run sales, service, and installation of garage doors and openers, entry doors, patio doors, and storm doors. Jammer Doors features rain or garage doors, steel or aluminum, and crafted for dependable, long-lasting service. Jammer Doors does their own work and installation using no subcontractors, saving you money. Avoid the big box doors and save with Jammer Doors. Visit the showroom at 2850 Brunswick Pike, Business Route 1 in Lawrenceville, or in the Yardley Grist Mill at 10 North Main Street, and coming soon, their magnificent new showroom on Route 1 opposite the Lawrence Shopping Center. Back here from Lawrence High School alongside Ryan Baxter, I'm Jordan Hirsch. No scores. We head to the bottom of the fourth and the three, four, five batters do up here for Lawrence. And Colin Summer, our video engineer. How dare you forget, how dare you forget Colin? Teak Toto, Kellen Moore, Riley Rivera, the three do up. You'll get your shout out, Colin. Don't worry. Patience, Summer. Patience. We're, we're waiting patiently for the summer weather. You have the last name. You got to bring it here. This is where Colin wishes he had a mic. Yeah, right? <laughs> First pitch delivers the heat, does Elam for strike one. Continues to work quickly. The 0 1 to Toto. Line foul back towards that parking lot again. 0-2. It was a busy inning for Toto in the last inning in right field. He had a couple plays that he had to make. See if he's ready to hit now. Went down on strikes back in the first. And nearly did right there. It remains 1-2. and two, Or it goes close. to 1-2. and two. That was close. That was really close. The 1-2 from Elam up high. On a pitch like that, you really don't like to see because... That was a really good pitch there, and I'm sure he thought it was a strike, and you hope it doesn't get him out of his rhythm in this at-bat. Count even, the 2-2 two -two to Toto is lined foul, and it hits one of the poles and shoots back into play. I, th I think it should be a rule now. If it stays on the fly, hits the pole, and crosses back into the field of play, it should be a fair ball. I just think that would be really fun. I bring that up to the people in charge of the rules here, uh, the CVC. I'll, I'll call Rob Manfred myself, get in the MLB so everybody follows uh, suit. That's an even better idea. I don't like Rob Manfred very much, so uh, I don't know how that conversation would go. He's not a popular guy, is Toto. Swings and misses at strike three. Looked to be a little behind on that breaker right there. He waited too long for that thing to drop into the zone and unfortunately swung right over top of it. These. Elam continuing his strong performance. Just his second strikeout, he's only allowed two or three hits rather as Kellen Moore digs in he grounded out to shortstop back in the first back in the second and he's ahead one to no Elan's been doing a lot of pitch to contact here again a lot of ground balls a lot of pop balls we've seen a couple Adam balls here as well on this Lawrence side trust in his defense is Elam and he's got the count back even one and one and well and when they're making plays like this it's really easy for you to go trust that team Elam's one one just off the plate. I'm curious to where some of these are missing because that, I believe, was a strike in one of the last innings as well. So The 2-1 to Moore is hit in the air foul That's off of first. Hard. We're good. Didn't hear any cracks. I lost the ball as it went up, but... Well, well if you don't see a ball hit a car, does it make a sound? <laughs> No insurance companies will have to be called there. Shout out, Geico. The 2-2 to Kellen Moore. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Elam. And there's two down in the bottom of the fourth. A lot of, lot of breaking stuff in the last at-bat. Got him out on the breaking stuff in the last at-bat. Brought the heat here this at-bat. Got him swinging right through that one. And now Riley Rivera will be the batter. He singled back in the second. Elam's in a groove, and the first pitch for Rivera is way off the plate. Elam's 1-0, grounded back up the middle, ranging to his left is Simpkins, quickly fires it to first in time, and a quick 1-2-3 inning for the Blue Devils right-hander. No score through four from Lawrence, the fifth we go. Ewing looking to break the tie next on the WBCB Sports Network. Hi, I'm Merrill Riggs. 
Kessel Dermatology is the place for all general dermatology needs for acne, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, hives, warts, and other growths. They have a friendly and courteous staff, and they can usually offer appointments within 24 hours for emergencies. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Welcome back here to Mercer County High School Baseball on the WBCB Sports Network. No score between the Cardinals and Blue Devils as we go to the fifth. Deacon Moore back out there. He's been really good today, Ryan. What have you liked out of his game on the mound so far? I love his ability to get ahead in most of these counts. Most of the time we've talked about Deacon Moore. We'll get done with what we're saying and then he'll start out the count 0-1. I have rarely seen a count today where he's behind in the count and even if he is, he gets that strike right back to even it up. He's always been battling in these at bats and he's won a lot of these at bats he's been an incredibly incredibly dominant pitcher today I, I, I apologize I started chuckling a little bit because of what happened with the papers just then. it's windy our VE Colin Summer who's been begging for shout outs will get one here because he lost some of the papers to the wind Eight, nine, and one do up for the Blue Devils in the top half of the fifth Sam Leibowitz Sam Simpkins and Joey Andreas and the first pitch from Moore here in the fifth is low for ball one. Leibowitz flew out to right field his first time up back in the second. Deacon Moore working quickly, swing and a miss, one and one. Just like I said, fell behind one one, fell behind one oh, got right back into the count there, one one, now we're even. The one one to Leibowitz is a breaking ball and a pitcher's pitch right there, one and two. Caught the very bottom of the zone right there. It's one of those loopers that you almost want to take a cut at, but you think it's too low. Moore gets his fifth strikeout of the evening. Evening, morning. <laughs> it's, it's opening day for everyone, guys. It's opening day for everyone. Moore gets his fifth strikeout. There we go. One out in the fifth. We're, we're still waking up, Jordan. I'm rusty. I'm still used to basketball. Nah, I get you. But and those games are always played in the evening. You're right. But to what I was going to say there for Ewing, after getting the called curveball there low, you can't take a pitch in a very similar spot right there. You have to swing the bat right there. First pitch to Simpkins is a strike. No balls in one strike. He, he's yeah, still 10.57 a.m. I don't know what my internal clock's doing. That's cool. He's been working that outside corner all evening. <laughs> Close enough to the evening. It's the evening somewhere, and it's now 0-2 I believe it's, Simpkins. I believe it's the evening in Great Britain. Oh, we're getting there right now. We'll pretend like we're across the pond right now. Let's try to save myself from that. I will not put on an accent. 0-2 to Simpkins. Fouled off. That's... Look out, cars. And one hop. And I think we're good. It looks like we're good. No insurance claims. So it remains 0 and 2 to the Blue Devil shortstop. More kicks and deals. Just a bit high. One ball and two strikes. That's a good pitch from Moore there. That ball had to look like a beach ball to Simpkins. Just a bit above the letters there. Moore working quickly. His 1 2 in the dirt. The artificial dirt. <laughs> Count back even to Simpkins, who's already been a strikeout victim once. That one's roped in the air out towards right, towards the gap, and ranging over to his right is Teep Toto to make the grab. Two down in the fifth. He's continuing to be busy out there. The last inning, he was really busy. He makes another play right here. That one looked like it was going to be tough, though, because center field and right field were converging, so good communication out there. And so back to the top of the lineup now for Joey Andreas, who's 0 for 2, and he takes a first pitch breaking ball for a strike. We've seen a six pitch at bat. We've seen a one pitch at bat. Let's see if we can find a happy medium here for Andreas. We think in three? I'm hoping five. Here's pitch number two, and it's inside. Well, Jordan, we're one away from your prediction. Let's see. One ball, one strike. Will this be the action pitch? 
It won't be as it's rocketed foul down the left field line. That close. We were almost that good at our job. So close. Yeah, we've... That would have been a reverse jinx. Yeah, it would have been. So one and two to Andreas. Moore looking for another one, two, three inning. His one, two. Outside. There's such late movement on the breaking ball there. It looks like it's going to stay in the zone until it's just not there anymore. And a good job there by Andreas to just spit on it. Two and two, the count. More kicks and deals. And a strike three called. He got him again. Deacon Moore fired up as he gets back to his dugout. No runs, no hits, no one left. To the bottom of the fifth we go. It's high school, so it's time to stretch on the WBCB Sports Network. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any make or model, Model. It's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Trenton Thunder Baseball returns for the 2024 season on Tuesday, June 4th. Catch all the fun and excitement of a Thunder game throughout the summer. For ticket information, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com or call 609-394-3300. That's 609-394-3300. Post-game firework nights, Tuesday dollar dog nights, and pork roll Fridays throughout the season. Trenton Thunder Baseball, Big League Futures, Major League Fun. Back here from Lawrence High School, Jordan Hirsch alongside Ryan Baxter. No score as we head to the bottom of the fifth. And for the Cardinals due up, it will be the six, seven, and eight hitters of Aiden Poot, Connor Williver, and Josh, Josh Vignoski. Colin Elam back to work. It's been a pitcher's duel so far between Elam and Deacon Moore. Elam right now with three strikeouts. He's given up four hits. And the first pitch to Poot is outside. I was wondering where that one missed. See, I, I, it's weird for me because I'm, I'm on a weird angle here, but I got, and I think a lot of these balls on the outside corners. That one's chopped foul one and one. A lot of these balls on the outside corners have been a lot closer than they really are. So I almost feel like I'm being a little too harsh here, but it seems like they've been in very similar spots and sometimes they're balls, sometimes they're strikes. <laughs> We'll say the home plate umpire today. He's had a very solid strike zone. Both pitchers have been around the plate all day. As a 1-1 from Elam, cut on and missed 1-2. and two. A little early on that one there. I would also just like to say I heard somebody walking by saying this is great baseball weather. They are a liar. The 1-2 is fouled. And that one's going to get down in foul territory. It remains 1-2. Deacon Moore's older brother, Kellen Moore, getting loose in the Lawrence bullpen right now. We'll see what head coach Jim Mayer decides to do for the sixth. And Kellen Moore, that 16 strikeout performance to open the season through six innings on Monday in the 5-2 to two win over Trenton. Yeah. One, two to Poot. Ground ball softly towards the right Tough side, play. charging on it and making the flip in time is Andreas. And there's one gone in the fifth. That's a great play from Andreas there. Beating it down the line. The pitcher couldn't make the play. Had to back it up right there. Sunshine on that play. Yes. Makes it a tad warmer. And you say that as the wind starts kicking. Yeah, well, we can't have it all, unfortunately. It is still early April. The beggars can't be choosers. Connor Williver, the batter. And he takes down and away for a ball. He doubled his last time up. That one's outside, one and, or two and out. Oh. Elam working extra quick here. The 2-0 -oh catches the outside corner for a strike. 
Yeah, you had to get one in there. You can't go 3 0 here. The 2 1 from Elon. Now 3 and 1. You would hope that he's not starting to, like, overthrow here. We are getting a little bit later into the game here, and he's been really, really solid so far. But hate to see him start losing it now. Still hasn't walked anyone. The 3-1 to Williver. Up and in, ball four, and he'll take first. He's almost able to kiss the ball right there with how close that one got. First base runner of the fifth here for Lawrence. Now, we can't really see down into this bullpen area here, so I don't know if anybody's going for Ewing at the moment, but if we see action for Lawrence and his pitch is going as well as he is, you can I can imagine what's going on for the Ewing side. Vignosti takes a strike. Again, both pitchers have been solid. Kellen Moore continues to loosen the Lawrence bullpen. Quickly 0-2, as after the five-pitch walk, Colin Elam Gets ahead now, no balls and two strikes on the left fielder, Viknoski. Comes back with ball one, low. We've already seen one double play from this Ewing side, started by Elam himself, so you know he wants to get another one here. One, two from Elam, ripped on the ground towards second. Andreas bobbles it, goes to first. That's his only play, and there's two down. Not sure if they would have had the chance of the double play, even if Andreas was able to make that play cleanly, but he'll take the out, and now two down here in the bottom of the fifth, and the batter will be Dan Drizga. There you go. First time today that I've gotten his name down first try. I'm sure he'll, I'm sure he'll appreciate that when he goes back and listens. But to go back on that play, that was a rocket hit to the second baseman, Andreas, there. He was lucky to keep that ball in front of him. First pitch to Drizga is a strike, 0-1. That high outside corner continues to be nipping these batters in the butt. This whole game, they've been letting that go. Go ahead, run in scoring position. The 0 1 to, Dr to Drizga up high. 1 and 1. Look for a check swing there, appeal down to the umpire at second. That's got to be tough to read for him. One one, popped up foul off of first and into the parking lot. And now Colin Elam a strike away from sending this one to the sixth scoreless. He's been nothing short of excellent for this Blue Devils team. A ball and two strikes. The pitch from Elam. Roped out towards right, heading back is Leibowitz, and now he settles under it, makes the grab. No score through five from Lawrence. We'll go to the sixth in a nothing-nothing ball game on the WBCB Sports Network. Hi, I'm Merrill Reeves. Kessel Dermatology is the place for all general dermatology needs, for acne, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, hives, warts, and other growths. They have a friendly and courteous staff, and they can usually offer appointments within 24 hours for emergencies. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Well, as it does in Little League. The Italian People's Bakery is proud to support high school sports on the WBCB Sports Network. Visit them at their signature location at 63 Butler Street for the finest rolls, deli meats, and pastries. Drive by to smell that homemade bread made daily or have them cater your next party or affair. The Italian People's Bakery, located on 63 Butler Street, is the place to go for the best hoagies on Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon. And the finest dessert trays for your special get-together. Visit them once again at 63 Butler Street in Chambersburg, the Italian People's Bakery, since 1936. They also sponsor our Italian People's Bakery Player of the Game. And so far here with no score, that's very much up in the air. Got to believe both starters are good candidates as Deacon Moore, the Cardinals starter, back out there for his sixth inning of work. We thought we might see his older brother Kellen come in, but he continues to warm the pen. And the first pitch delivered to Patron is cut on and missed for strike one. 
you might just have somebody loose just in case. On a day like today, you want to have whoever you are planning on using as loose as possible. You can't have any injuries because of this cold weather. Owan is grounded right back to Moore on the mound. Races to first underhand flip in time, one away. That almost looked like it went off the baseman's leg there, and it just wasn't called. I, yeah. I, it looked weird. It was a weird little angle. I thought that might have hit the foot of Patron, but he didn't react like it did, didn't argue the call. Yeah, no. And so that goes down as a 1-3 put out. And now it brings Sam the three-hole hitter going. Chris Salmon to the plate. Salmon oh. rocks that one to deep right field. Going back on it is Toto towards the gap, and he... Did he catch that? Makes the yeah, grab. What a play. Teak Toto robbing Salmon of a triple. What a wow. play. Oh, my God. Teak Toto. Toto. Top five name in Mercer County. Top ten sports center play here at Lawrence High. Oh, my. I I'm speechless. That was insane. He flashes the leather and right. Two down and... <laughs> Chris Salmon cannot believe it as he walks back to his dugout. He laced that ball. Unbelievable play by Toto and Wright. Two you down in the sixth. You can't even be mad about that if you're Salmon. That's just an amazing play. Colin Elam, the pitcher, digs oh. in and swings and misses. Is that a curveball? He was trying to repeat the exact same swing from Salmon, just couldn't get the couldn't get the contact there. 0-1, swing and a miss, 0-2. Going back to that last play there by Toto. Off the bat, that sounded like it had a chance to get out of here. If that fence was any shorter, I would have thought it was. Again, producers, not directors. The 0-2, swing and a miss. Deacon Moore fired up. He's through six, scoreless, and Lawrence will go to the bottom half of the inning. Still no score. Cardinals looking to break the tie on the WBCB Sports Network. Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honor for your Mercer County prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Trenton Thunder Baseball returns for the 2024 season on Tuesday, June 4th. Catch all the fun and excitement of a Thunder game throughout the summer. For ticket information, visit TrentonThunder.com. That's TrentonThunder.com or call 609-394-3300. That's 609-394-3300. Postgame firework nights Tuesday, dollar dog nights, and pork roll Fridays throughout the season. Trenton Thunder Baseball, big league futures, major league fun. Colin Elam back out to work for Ewing in the bottom of the sixth. Still no score between the Blue Devils and Cardinals. Top of the order due up here for Lawrence. That's Robert Kelly, Deacon Moore, and Teak Toto, who made a spectacular grab and right in the top half of this inning. And if he hadn't done that, I mean, Chris Salmon would have had a triple at least. At least. Like that, that was one of the better plays that I've seen in a long time. I've been doing this for a couple of years now. I've seen a lot of web gem top 10 plays. That could have been a game-saving play right there from Teak Toto. And an unbelievable effort out there. He's been really, really busy all day today. So he's still got his legs underneath him, able to make a play like that. And you can tell that this Lawrence dugout is excited. They're ready to go. The momentum is here for them. Moore followed it up with a big K on Elam to end that inning. Momentum has shifted. Yeah, and both of these dugouts have kind of had to sit on their hands the whole game, not just because it's been cold, but because there hasn't been much to cheer about. And this Cardinals dugout fired up now as Robert Kelly takes a strike. It's 0-1. Continued that outside corner trend. Kelly 0 for 2 with a pop out and a ground out. And this one's lined down the left field line. It's going to roll towards the wall. Kelly's off to the races around first, digging for two. He's going to get there standing with a leadoff double. Looked like a little trouble finding the ball out there in left field. But nevertheless, big double there from Kelly, who flapped the wings into the dugout there at the end of the play. 
<laughs> the birds are flying now. Cardinals are flying. And they've got their leadoff man in scoring position for the pitcher, Deacon Moore, who's thrown six scoreless innings on the mound so far, and he's got another chance here to help his own cause in the sixth. Toto behind him, his brother in the cleanup spot. Prime, prime position for Lawrence to take advantage of this opportunity. Kelly takes his lead off second. Elam looks back a couple of times. Lesko comes in, the bunt is a perfect one towards third. Elam off the mound, he's gonna have no play. Throws to first, oh no. and it gets away. Here comes Kelly for the plate, he'll score standing. It's one nothing Cardinals, and now the attention turns to over at first base as there's a player down there's two for Ewing. Both Moore and uh, I think that's Chris, uh, it's Andreas. Because on the bunt, both first and third yeah, it's came Andreas. in. Yeah, Andreas. Both first and third came in, and Andreas went to cover first for the play on Elam. And on the throw, I believe they, I don't know if Andreas got stepped on or if they like collided knees or shins, but it was a really, really hard collision there. Um, Moore's back on his feet, so he seems That's to be doing okay, see. but Andreas is in a great deal of pain right now. Yeah, and the trainers and both managers back out there to attend to him. The run scores, so it's one nothing Lawrence in the sixth. Yeah, despite everything, the ball was still alive. The run scores, Lawrence is up one nothing. Now it goes back to that momentum shift that we were talking about, but it's an incredibly unfortunate situation that such an electric, energetic game that was just starting to get going. Now we have to worry about the safety of uh, Joey Andreas and make sure that he's 100% okay. And while we do wait, Andreas still down. Again, not what you want to see. We're going to take a quick break and be right back on the WBCB Sports Network. Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609 609- 882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Welcome back to Lawrence High School. Good to see Joey Andreas going to stay in the ball game at second. So to recap there, the bunt was laid down perfectly by Moore. He gets to first. We'll give it a single and an error. So no RBI, but Kelly comes around to score. Cardinals on the board first here on the bottom of the sixth. one nothing, And now T. Toto, the batter, looking to add to which has been a great afternoon or morning in the field. We're all over the place with time today. It's 1-0. With the Evening, wind. morning, afternoon. I mean, with the wind, the, the wind's blowing so hard, it's probably adjusted the time every now and then. Yeah. So you're probably right. The earth is spinning even faster as back to first easily as Deacon Moore. After that collision, I don't think Moore's going to be going anywhere. And I would like to say there was a little bit of nice little sportsmanship at the end of that. Moore and Andreas came together, gave each other a little dap and a hug, make sure that they were okay. So you'd love to see that here on the field. Yeah. And it's good to see both players stay in the ball game as well. 1-0, and this one's bunted foul up the third baseline. That was close to being a really gorgeous bunt there from Toto. You're trying to one-up what Moore did on the last at bat. Count even now, one and one. Toto has struck out swinging a couple of times today. I figure it's just safer to just say today now instead of guess the time. There we go. More easily back at first. You can just say on this beautiful sixth day of April. I'll call it the sixth day of April. Beautiful. <laughs> eh. At least it's not raining. We've seen three separate throwovers now, I think, from Elam to first. Keep it more honest. Ball and a strike to Toto. There goes more. Pitches bunted in the air. Foul up over the backstop. And it's one and two. And now goes back. We, we saw this earlier in the game as well. 
they had two strikes, they were bunting a lot, and they pulled away from the bunt and got a single out of it. So I wonder if this is going to be the same type of thing here. We got Toto down having a meeting of the minds there with the skipper. So we'll see what they're discussing. And now we got a little bit of sprinkles here. I can feel it on my face. Well, it wasn't supposed to rain today, but again, the way it's gone this week. It's also supposed to be spring, Jordan. It is. Next week, next week the weather looks better. That doesn't help us today. The one two to Toto hit foul. That's going towards the parking lot over there. <laughs> you know Toto wants to do something great with the bat here after that play you made him right. Yeah, kind of come full circle as Elam whips a pass over to first and back safely as Moore. That one in the dirt. Moore taken off for a second. There's going to be no chance. Good throw behind the plate by Salmon, but Moore gets his hand into the bag in time. And another runner in scoring position for the Cardinals with no one out. Toto's got the count even now as well. Wild pitch advances the runner. Two balls, two strikes, no one out. Cardinals looking to add to their 1-0 lead. On a 2-2, Toto hits it foul. He's swinging hard. He's swinging really hard right now. And he stays alive. Is put a good charge into that one, but out of play. Deacon Moore off of second, the pitch in the dirt again, and this time Moore will hold up where he is. Even on plays like that, when you got a catcher like Salmon back there, it's tough on pass balls because he's got the cannon to make anything close. Full count, base open at first. Kellen Moore in the on-deck circle. Big pitch here to Toto. The 3-2 hit foul again. It's a battle between Elam and Toto right now. You know, if you're Ewing, you do have that base open, so it's not the biggest deal if you do give it up. But considering the power that you got coming up next, you definitely want to get this guy out. Kellen Moore looming. The 3-2 is lined into left field. It's going to drop for a base hit. Moore will be held at third. And now the throw gets away. And now going up to second is Toto. And he'll slide in safely. Two in scoring position now for Kellen Moore. Great at bat from T. Toto. Keeps his good day going. Amazing play in right. Gets two runners in scoring position now for possibly the biggest bat in this lineup coming up. So Lawrence is definitely on the move. And now an interesting decision. Kellen Moore with the base open at first. Of course, a walk would load up the bases, but it would put the double play in order. Still a one-run game. No outs here in the inning either. Righty on righty. Kellen Moore a chance to give his team some separation here in the sixth. Infield plays in. The first pitch from Elam inside. <laughs> Kellen Moore 0 for 2, a strikeout and a ground out to short. The 1 0 to Moore on the outside corner, 1 and 1. I hear some groans from the fans over here. They wanted Kellen to take a big hack at that one. Count even at 1. Elam kicks and deals, swing and a miss, nasty stuff, one and two. And Elam has been doing really, really well all game. Yeah, they got to run this inning, but it wasn't earned, and he's got to try and get everything to get out of this jam here. It's only a one-run game. Elam looking for a strikeout. The one, two, and it's popped up into short right. Leibowitz is there, makes the grab. Moore's coming for the plate, throws cut off, and then Lesko can't get it out of his glove. Deacon Moore will score, and it's 2-0 Lawrence. Drives in his brother on the sack fly, not entirely the way he wanted to get him in, and also not entirely the slide either for Deacon Moore coming into home there, but nevertheless, it's a two-run game now. One, one out, another runner 90 feet away from scoring. The biggest thing in baseball is momentum. And after that catch there from Teak Toto, the momentum completely shifted and 
Ewing has to do something to get that momentum back on their side immediately. Yeah, and a tough play there at first by Lesko. They had a chance to get more at the plate, just couldn't get the ball out of his glove. It's those transfers that be killing him most of the time. Yeah, and up to third goes Toto. First pitch to Rivera is outside. Elam didn't like that one at all. I put it exactly where it's been called a strike the whole game. Showed a little bit of frustration there. So one ball and no strikes. Riley Rivera, the five hole hitter, pops this one up foul over our heads. Counts even at one off the roof of the building behind us. Rolls right back to the field here too. As light rain has begun, begun to fall here in Lawrence. Thought we were done with this this week. I guess not. We're never done with it. No. Looks like we're about to get some sun in a second though. Cross your fingers. I don't know if I can. They can't move very well. Yeah. The 1-1 one, one pitch is chopped towards what first a on a half swing coming home and scoring is Toto. The umpire is calling this one foul. What? I don't wait, know about wait, that wait, one. Wait, 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 what happened? <laughs> Chris Salmon, the Ewing catcher, kind of looks back towards us and he gave us kind of a look of, I don't know what's going on. And we're a little confused too. That ball. I mean, it never hit the foot of Rivera, at least that's the way it seemed from our vantage point. You know, Ewing catches a break because the run would have easily scored. As confused as Salmon was by that or how, like, how he knew it might have been a little different, I know he's grateful for it. Yeah, it keeps that third run out at third base, so the score remains 2-0. It's a ball and two strikes now to Rivera. Elam was also probably feeling a little bit grateful that that one got called his way. Missed out on that one pitch on the outside, so had to give him something, I guess. The sun comes out. The one-two to Rivera. Got him. Big time strikeout from Elam, and there's two outs in the sixth. If he can get out of this, leaving that runner on third, this is huge for Ewing. And so now that foul ball call may loom large as Aiden Poot digs back in. He's 0 for 2, grounded into a double play, also grounded out to second. And the first pitch is ripped on the ground towards second, and oh. it's off the glove of Lesko. It's going to allow a run to score. Teak Toto crosses the plate. It's 3 0 Lawrence. Teak Toto finds out there's no place like home. Beautifully done there, Ryan. I've been waiting for that one all day. Again, the references have been on point all morning by you. And going back to that play, I thought. That ball should have just been fielded by Andreas. Oh, Lesko absolutely. decides to try to lay out for it. Even if he made the play, Elam was, wasn't was over to first in time. And now we're going to have a meeting on the mound as three runs have scored here in the bottom of the sixth for Lawrence. But, yeah, They've that, opened up this 3 nothing lead. Go ahead, Ryan. That last play there, it's uh, it kind of... I. What was probably going through Lesko's head was, I gotta make a play to get my team back into the dugout there. It's just one of those things, you see the ball, make a play on the ball. It, baseball is all situational. So anything that it comes down to, you're thinking of the situation at hand. You're not really, you're not really thinking about what's behind you. You got the ball in front of you, you wanna make that play. Obviously he's got a great second baseman and Andreas right behind him, but at the end of the day, you want to make that play. So it might have been just a little bit of a mental error to go and do that. You're right, Andrea should have definitely made that play, but in this game, in this mindset, trying to get something going for your team, you're going to do anything possible to get that play made. Yeah, and I'll be generous with the scoring there. We'll give him the single and the RBI. Like you said, that ball probably should have been fielded by Andreas. So two down in the six, Connor Williver, the batter. On earlier, takes his lead off first, pitches outside, a ball and no strikes. Aiden another Poot now one. one for three with that single. That's another one right there on the outside. That's been called a lot today. That got left alone there by the home plate umpire. Back easily is Poot at first. Yeah, we saw both Elam and Deacon Moore early in this game working that outside part of the plate. However, as they've continued to go out there, the strike zone has shrunk. And it's 2-0 and as that one's taken high. That sun feels good, Ryan. Oh, absolutely does. It's good because the black absorbs the heat, so I can just rub my hands down my back here and get actually feel like a person again with my hands. Thankfully, I didn't see that one coming at me. I would have flinched. That one shot foul, two balls and one strike. We've 
got in the sun in short bursts here this morning. I think this is the longest thing that we've had today. Soak it in while we can. The 2 1 pitch to Williver is inside. Three balls and a strike. Aiden Poot, Thursday's hero, takes his lead off of first. The 3 1 from Elam is hitting the air out towards right field. Leibowitz going back. It's turned around. It's over his head and it's going to drop. Both runners. Off to the races, rounding third and heading for home is Poot. He'll score. Williver into second with his second double of the game. It's 4 0 Cardinals, a crooked number here in the bottom of the sixth. Big time swing, big time hit. This Lawrence offense has completely woken up here. It's the fifth hit of the inning for the Cardinals, and they've jumped on top by four. And now the eighth batter of the inning will be the left fielder, Josh Viknoski. And, and we're gonna have a courtesy runner going out to second. It's number 23 for the, the Cardinals. Yeah, and looking at their roster, I don't see a 23. There's a 24, Seneca Sumners. That one's chopped foul, it's 0-1. So for the time being, we don't know who that is, unfortunately. And Elam's trying to work his way out of this to get Ewing back up there to tie this game up. That one's crushed down the left field line, slicing towards foul territory, and it's off the glove of the left fielder, Greg. I didn't think he had a chance at that. Me neither did I, honestly. That one just kept slicing away from him. There's a lot of foul territory out here on uh, in left field, so anything can be... Any play that seems like unmakeable could probably be made. Snow balls and two strikes now to Viknoski. Four runs have crossed the plate in the bottom of the sixth for Lawrence. Viknoski looking to add on to that. Runner leads off second. The 0-2 coming from Elam. And that's line into left field, a base hit. It drops in front of Greggy, plays it on a hop. They'll hold the runner at third. And a nice job by Greg to hit his cutoff man and leave Viknoski at first. But now corners and two outs for Dan Drizga. He'll be the ninth man to come to the plate in this inning as the wind picks up. And Loris can't help but hit right now, honestly. They've done they've done an amazing job getting into the counts, getting the pitch that they wanted. They struggled a lot earlier against Elam, but they've definitely that to the wayside here and they've been able to really just come back and show that they're one of the better teams in Mercer County and we do have a pitching change here. Yeah, it's going to be Sam Simpkins, the new pitcher for Ewing. So Elam done after five and two thirds and as Simpkins takes his warm up pitches, we'll head to break. We'll be back with more action next on the WBCB Sports Network. Hi. I'm Merrill Riggs. Kessel Dermatology offers top-of-the-line medical-grade skin care products manufactured in the USA. They're tested and developed by a team of board-certified dermatology experts, and they come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Don't forget, if you miss any of today's action, you could read all about it in tomorrow's edition of The Trentonian. For your complete local and national news seven days a week, it's The Trentonian or online at trentonian.com, the only newspaper serving Bucks, Burlington, and Mercer County seven days a week. It's The Trentonian. Four runs have scored in the bottom of the six for the Cardinals, and the new pitcher for Ewing is Sam Simpkins. So he will move from shortstop to pitcher. Colin Elam takes his place out at short. He was good today, Ryan. Five and two thirds, allowed a couple of earned runs, four overall, all coming here in the sixth. Maybe just ran out of gas a little bit at the end. Yeah, I think that's really what it was. He put his heart out there on the mound today. He had everything, it, he had everything working for him, really. He had a really good offense stifled for a really, really long time. It's just unfortunate for him that a really, really good play had to be made to get this team woken up. And it's like he said, four runs, only three of them were earned. 
Uh, and quite frankly, I don't think the score dictates how good of a game Elam pitched and how good of a game Ewing has played. Like, you look at a game, it says 4 nothing. it's like, oh, well, they just didn't really do all that great. I beg to differ. I think Ewing put up a really, really good fight today, and they still have a whole half inning to go here, and we all know baseball. Anything could happen in this beautiful game here. So if they can get out of this, leave the runner stranded there on third, I see no reason to why this Ewing team can't get motivated to come back and drop a five spot here in the top of the seventh. So there's corners and two outs for the third baseman, Dan Drisga. Sam Simpkins, the new pitcher for Ewing, looking to get out of this jam here in the sixth and keep his team in it. They'll need at least four in the seventh. And with the score now, it makes you wonder which one of the Moore brothers is going to be out on the hill this next inning. Yeah, Deacon Moore has had to sit for a while back in the dugout. First pitch from Simpkins is low and away. And Kellen was up, warming up a little bit more before his at-bat this inning as well. So you could be seeing some closer effects here. 1-0 to Drizga. At the letters for strike one. It'll get me over strike there for Simpkins. Drizga so far today. 0 oh for 2. Runner goes from first. Pitches in the dirt. Throw down by Sam. Now they've got him picked off. Runner coming for the plate. The throw is in time. What a, what a play. play by the Ewing infield to send us to the seventh. 4 nothing. Cardinals on top. We'll see who comes in to try to close this one down next on the WBCB Sports Network. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow, bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup or not feeling well, advanced medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. Welcome back to Lawrence High School, where the Cardinals struck for four in the bottom of the sixth and now lead it 4 nothing over Ewing. Deacon Moore, his day is done. Six innings of shutout ball for him. He's put himself in prime contention for our Italian People's Bakery player of the game. We'll have that interview coming for you following the conclusion here. But his older brother, Kellen, now out on the mound. Not a safe situation, but looking for three outs and to get the Cardinals off to a 3-0 start. Kellen Moore, six innings, 16 strikeouts in a start on Monday against Trenton. He's committed to Lafayette, and Ewing's got a tall task here against this right-hander for the Cardinals. It will be the five, six, and seven hitters. That's Mignona, Lesko, and Greg do up. And base runners are key here, Ryan. You can't get it all back in one swing. You kind of got to just play a little small ball against a pitcher like Kellen Moore if you're Ewing and you want to make this uh, comeback here in the seventh. Yeah, you, yeah with, the, with that said, though, you don't want to come out here and give away, certain, give away at bats here. Like, yeah, you want to get runners on base and everything, but if you come out here and drop a bunt and it doesn't work out all that well, you're already down and out. And this is a tall task in a literal and a figurative sense here for the Blue Devils because he stands probably 6'3", 6'4", on a good day, and it's a tall task if you were just talking about his last game where he struck out 16 of his 18 batters that he faced here. And if you're Lawrence, it's like, well, we just want to go home and get out of this game, so why not just go with the best arm that we have available? Ewing needs to be aggressive in these at-bats. They need to, honestly, Ewing just needs to swing away. They need to get on base and they need to swing away. First pitch of the seventh from Moore is a fastball for strike one. Got a little Vaseline in the catcher's glove. It's the second time I've seen it pop out since uh, Kellen got on the hill here. And taking over at first base for Kellen Moore is Aiden Crowley. 0-1 pitch, the heat inside, 1-1. One one. The little grunts from Kellen every time he throws, getting a little bit of oomph behind those pitches there. There are a few guys in the MLB that do that. It always annoys me just hearing it over the broadcast, but. Hitters have always said that it's not really something that affects them 
when a pitcher is grunting like that, he's, you know, you're kind of so locked in. Yeah. It's two balls and a strike. Two on to Mignona, just a bit low, three and one. What did that Kellen one wanted that. I think everybody in the dugout wanted that one too. That one didn't miss by much. Might have came in too fast, didn't know where it was. Mignona one for two with a double this morning. The three one from Moore is hit on the ground sharply to third. Up with it, out there is Drizga, and the throw is low and it's off the glove of Crowley. You'll take them any way you can get them if you're Ewing. Lead off, batter is aboard. Still a great play over there at third base there. That was a rocket off the bat. And fortunately able to make the play, just not able to get the out. That could have been extra bases if that ball got by. Yeah, it would have been a, a close play. I'm going to mark that down as a single in a generous mood today. That one's taken up high. One ball, no strikes to the first baseman, Lesko. And now... Jim Mayer, the head coach for Lawrence, will take a slow trot out to the mound, tells his infield to stay where they are. He just wants to have a quick word with his pitcher one-on-one. -on -one. Any idea what this might be about here, Ryan? Uh, if, if it's me, he's literally just saying anything and everything to get his mind off the current situation. Like, he's probably just asking him what he's going to get from Wawa after the game, just so that he could calm down a little bit. And if you're talking baseball with him, maybe just tell him to stop overthrowing a little bit. It seems like he's trying to aim the baseball when he really should just be putting the ball out there over the plate and either A, trusting his stuff, or B, trusting his defense that they can make the play. And he's got a four-run lead, so. And like, Because that's the thing. You can give up something here. You don't want to, but you can. You have a cushion. But, again, not something you want to do. 1-0 pitch is on the outside part of the plate for strike one. So whatever Jim Mayer said must have worked as Moore delivers a strike. Keith Lesko 0 for 2, a fly out and a ground out. This one's ripped foul. Look out over there in the Ewing dugout, 1 and 2. Almost took Ryan Gregg's head off. <laughs> Danger, <laughs> dangerous place to be is the batter's box. Ball and two strikes to Lesko. He's braver than me. If I, I'll get back in the dugout. The 1 2 from Moore. Swing and a miss. Throws gas right by him, and there's one down in the seventh. It was right there, just couldn't catch up to it. That was a big time fastball from Kellen Moore. And so now now that will bring the aforementioned Ryan Gregg to the plate. Thankfully lived after that foul ball scare, so let's see if he can put one in play here for the Devils. He already got a runner on first base, so they got step one started. That's Jake Mignona out there at first. Owen won the count. He's throwing hard, but you just can't have the bat on the shoulder. You can't just hope that he's going to miss because he throws hard. A lot of these guys, they throw hard and they miss their spot, but he just put that one pretty much down the middle. Oh, one for Moore. Oh, and again, two. Again, same spot. And at this point, I wonder now if you're great. you got to be able to shorten up here because Kellen Moore has got that fastball working. If I'm Kellen Moore, I'm not throwing anything but the heat here. Just keep it going until they can hit it. The 0-2 pitch. Way outside, one and two, over through that one. Don't do it, just do it again. Do the exact same thing. Trying to throw that one through the glove of his catcher, Dobkin. He throws hard enough to put a hole in bats. Like, he'll, like they'll literally swing through it and they'll just establish a hole in the bat. He just has to put it there. Exactly On like the outside that. corner, a called strike three. Two down in the seventh. Kellen Moore, a pair of strikeouts. He's doing exactly what he's supposed to do here. They have trouble with the fastball. Why go to anything else? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. A lot of the times they want to get their breaking balls to be established to be their strikeout pitches. That just can't happen. If it's working, it's working. This isn't the major leagues. You don't have to be super analytical. Sam Leibowitz, the last hope for Ewing. He's behind 0-1. Kellen Moore just going exclusively with the heat right now. It's the steady, steady diet. Fastball, fastball, fastball. Mignona leads off first. Crowley does not hold him on. That one's grounded up the first baseline. Foul, and the Cardinals a strike away from a 3-0 start. He was ready for that fastball, and he was still behind it a little bit. It's just one of those things you have to start. You have to start the step as he gets his, like, leg up in the air, and then you just got to get going through your swing. They're having a really hard time catching up, and Simpkins looks ready, so he better, he better hope that he gets on here. No balls, two strikes, two outs. The 0-2 to Leibowitz, grounded foul down the first baseline, and 
Leibowitz stays alive. Ewing starting to swing a little bit more now. These pitches are way too close to take. They've had, what, four or five straight fastballs kind of just called for strikes here before Leibowitz came up and started hacking. Mignona off of first. The 0-2 from Kellen Moore. Just slow and taking second is Mignona on the defensive indifference. That was nasty. Really good take there. I'm not, again, it's one of those things I'm not sure where it missed because that looked like it caught the bottom to me. But that was a beautiful, beautiful pitch there. And if it's him again, I'm going right back to the gas. Slowed him down, speed him right back up. A ball and two strikes. The one two from Kellen Moore outside. This isn't a bat that Ewing desperately needed to because these at bats were going quick. Making more out there, throw some pitches, get a little ahead of himself, possibly get frustrated that he can't find his own. The 2 2 from Kellen Moore. That and time he got him. Three strikeouts in the seventh. The Moore brothers combined to shut down the Ewing offense, and it's a 4 0 win for the Cardinals. They're 3 0 to begin the 2024 season. An unbelievable pitching performance on both sides. At the end of the day, it came down to Lawrence. The Moore brothers were absolutely untouchable. Nine total strikeouts between the two, with Moore coming out, with Kelly coming out and shutting the door for his brother, who was unbelievable to say the least. Shut out baseball from both brothers, and Lawrence is off to a great start, looking to continue an amazing season that they've started. And Deacon Moore is going to be our Italian People's Bakery player of the game. We will have that interview coming for you next. It's a 4-0 Cardinals win here on a chilly Saturday in April. We'll take a quick break. Be back with our player of the game interview right after this on the WBCB Sports Network. Hi, I'm Merrill Reeves. Kessel Dermatology offers great cosmetic dermatology featuring the latest technology in cosmetics, including Morpheus 8 for skin tightening and scars, ultraviolet A and B light treatment for psoriasis, eczema, and itching. Kessel Dermatology now offers Genesis and XLV laser treatments for wrinkles, facial discoloration, scars, and hair removal. Kessel Dermatology provides Botox and fillers. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honorfree, your Mercer County prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Hi, I'm Merrill Riggs. Kessel Dermatology has a highly rated and award-winning dermatology team with over 130 years of collective clinical experience. They've been voted as the region's best dermatologist and doctor for 20 consecutive years. Over 1,500 five-star reviews from satisfied patients. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609-882-6365 at 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine, the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road, Ewing Township. Capital Health's primary care network continues to grow bringing its extensive option of locations to your neighborhood. Whether you're scheduling a wellness checkup, 
or not feeling well, Advanced Medicine starts with a Capital Health primary care doctor at locations near you in Mercer, Bucks, and Burlington counties. To find a Capital Health primary care location that's convenient for you, visit capitalmedicalgroup.org. That's capitalmedicalgroup.org. Hi, I'm Merrill Reese. Most people diagnosed with skin cancer are not even aware of their cancer. It's important to get a complete skin checkup. Kessel Dermatology offers a vast array of surgical procedures, including Mohs surgery, plus other non-surgical options. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Hi, I'm Merrill Reese. Kessel Dermatology offers top-of-the-line medical-grade skincare products manufactured in the USA. They're tested and developed by a team of board-certified dermatology experts, and they come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Hi, I'm Merrill Reese. Kessel Dermatology is the place for all general dermatology needs for acne, rosacea, eczema, psoriasis, hives, warts, and other growths. They have a friendly and courteous staff, and they can usually offer appointments within 24 hours for emergencies. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. This is Merrill Reese reminding you that Haldeman Ford Subaru on Route 33 in Hamilton Township is more than just a great place to purchase a new Ford Subaru or pre-owned car or truck. Their collision and service centers services all makes and models and specializes in fleet service. Haldeman's Collision Center is renowned for their work. It's a state-of-the-art facility. All insurance accepted, free estimates and loaner cars available, and one of the friendliest staffs around. From small dents to major repairs on any make or model, Model, it's Haldeman Ford Subaru Collision Center, Route 33 in Hamilton Township. They're good! Hi, this is Mercer County Prosecutor Angelo Honorfree, and I hope you're enjoying today's game. I'd like to commend today's students for participating in today's event. Being a part of extracurricular activities, whether it's an athletic event, marching in the band, or performing in the school play, or being on the debate team, is good for today's youth. And parents, Stay involved in your children's activities and encourage them. An involved parent nurtures your children to accomplish great things. I'm proud to support the youth of Mercer County. This is Angelo Honorfree, your Mercer County prosecutor, and I hope you enjoyed today's game. Hi, I'm Merrill Reese. Kessel Dermatology offers great cosmetic dermatology featuring the latest technology in cosmetics, including Morpheus 8 for skin tightening and scars, ultraviolet A and B light treatment for psoriasis, eczema, and itching. Kessel Dermatology now offers Genesis and XLV laser treatments for wrinkles, facial discoloration, scars, and hair removal. Kessel Dermatology provides Botox and fillers. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Hi, I'm Merrill Reese. Kessel Dermatology has a highly rated and award-winning dermatology team with over 130 years of collective clinical experience. They've been voted as the region's best dermatologist and doctor for 20 consecutive years. Over 1,500 five-star reviews from satisfied patients. Take care of your skin. Schedule an appointment with Kessel Dermatology. Hi, Merrill Reese reminds you to come back home to traditional Italian cuisine at the Revere Restaurant, 802 River Road in Ewing Township. You'll always feel welcome at the Revere. It's like stepping back in time where you'll feel like you're dining in South Philly or New York's Little Italy. Start your meal with complimentary Hoboken bread. Choose from a menu featuring fresh seafood dishes, succulent steaks and chops, or homemade pasta dishes. You can even eat at the bar. The Revere is open seven days for lunch and dinner. Private room available for special affairs, plus catering. For reservations, call 609 
609-882-6365. At 609-882-6365. Come home to traditional Italian cuisine. The Revere Rest. Back here from Lawrence High School with our Italian People's Bakery player of the game, Deacon Moore. Deacon, here is your gift card Thank you. to the Italian People's Bakery. Had you down six innings, two hits, seven strikeouts, your first start of the year. How did it feel to get back out there? I mean, it felt really good. In the preseason, I I got through it with not many runs, but I really didn't pitch how I wanted to. So today, I just let it loose, and I felt really good out there. Last two games, you guys on offense, it's taken a little bit for the offense to get going, but you've been able to come up with big hits when you need it. Is that kind of just a feeling of good teams finding a way to win? Yeah, I mean, I feel like every time we're close in the end of the game, we're going to win. I would, I think I would, the team would like, and coach would really like for us to start hitting, getting bigger leads early in the game, help save pitching. But, yeah, I mean, I feel like we're just going to win every time we're in a close game. Your brother Kellen comes out there, slams the door in the seventh. What's it like playing with him on a team like this? Yeah, I mean, it's fun. He's like another coach for me. He tells me what I need to do. He calms me down before the game, and especially on the pitching side. I give him a little help on the hitting side, though. Well, both of you guys, hitting and pitching, did a great job today. Congrats on the win. Go celebrate it with your teammates. Thank you. Our Italian People's Bakery player of the game, Deacon Moore, we thank him for joining us here this morning. 4 nothing Cardinals over the Blue Devils. Ryan, want to get your final thoughts on this game. Took till the sixth for us to get any runs scored, but the Cardinals were able to get players across the plate when they needed it, and they are able to start out 3-0. and Yeah, absolutely. Lawrence is as good as advertised. They're trying to repeat the stellar season that they had with a bunch of the returning talent that they had. They showed that they could be a really good team in this county, and to counteract that, Ewing showed that they can play. You know, it didn't go their way, unfortunately, but they showed that they got the talent. The pitching is right there. A great game from Colin Elam, and to go along with the beautiful performance from most of the defense behind him, too, specifically his catcher, uh, Chris Salmon, but you know it's a tough loss for them. But you're gonna, they're going to get back out on the practice field on Monday and hope that they don't have to go through this again. I have high hopes for the Ewing Blue Devils. Well, Ryan, thank you for joining us here today and have fun at WrestleMania tonight. I'll try my best, guys. Thank you. I'll thank our sponsors one last time: the Capital Health System, Mercer County Prosecutor's Office, Haldeman Ford Subaru, Kessel Dermatology, the Revere Restaurant, the New Jersey Education Association, Trenton Thunder, the Trentonian, the Italian People's Bakery, Jam. Jammer Doors, Hyundai of Trenton, and Mako Ewing all bring you portions of today's game. And so one final time here from Lawrence for our video engineer, Colin Summer, our cameraman and color commentator, Ryan Baxter. I'm Jordan Hirsch saying thank you for listening and have a good rest of your weekend, everyone.